What's up losers, KD3 here. So you've gotten the request to defeat the ultimate opponent, got in over your head cause you beat the reaper and realized that there's much more to this fight than meets the eye. No worries, lend me your ear and I'll show you how to defeat her. Let's get into it. With my vision, I'll guide you all to victory. Sounds great! First, I'd like to explain how to unlock this fight in the first place, because this isn't one you can just hop into. There are two things you must do first. First, you must go on all of the Elizabeth dates. This can be done by completing a total of 80 requests. I have a guide that will help you get that done. It's a lot easier than you think. Next, you have to defeat the Reaper. You can cheese him on peaceful mode at level 20 or whatever like everyone else, or you can follow my guide. Following my guide will probably be the better choice since I show you how to unlock a Theurgy skill mandatory for this fight. Once you've done both of these things, you will get the request to defeat the ultimate opponent, accept it, and head through the door to Monad on floor 255 of Tartarus. If you haven't defeated the enemies inside, you'll need to do so before you can proceed through the door that lies at the end. Now it's time for the fight, but hold on. Before you get started, you need to know that this isn't just any old fight that you can waltz into unprepared. There are rules to this little engagement here. I don't want to follow any stupid rules, I just want to fight. Well, alright then, see ya. Just make sure you like and subscribe before you leave. A few minutes later. Cheating, huh? I'm disappointed in you. Welcome back, loser. You ready to win this fight? Like I was saying, there are rules to this fight that you must follow. The first rule is that you must come alone. This is the only rule that you're told while the rest are hidden. The next rule is that you must not use any persona that can nullify, drain, or reflect any upcoming attacks. You can still bring them with you and use them, but if you happen to have one equipped that can do any of these things to the next attack that she plans to use, you will be instantly killed instead. So be careful if you plan to use them. For peaceful difficulty play, Players, I have some bad news for you. It's against the rules to revive yourself during this fight. It may look like you got away with it, but like in Fez, Elizabeth will keep trying to instant kill you until you stay down, so don't even bother. There's also a term limit, 50 if I recall correctly. If you fail to beat her within 50 turns, she will instantly kill you. Finally, you must not use Armageddon at the wrong time. If you use it against her and she survives, she will instantly kill you. Now let's get into equipment. What should I bring to this boss fight? I'll show you what I use. For my weapon, I use Lucifer's Blade. On top of this being the strongest weapon in the game, it boosts your stats and comes with the skill Magic Ability. Magic Ability increases the power of all non-almighty magic by 25%, which means I don't have to actually put the ability on the persona. For my armor, I use the Armor of Light. Not only does it have the highest defense in the game, but it also drastically reduces the magic damage that you take, which Elizabeth does a lot of. Your shoes aren't too important as long as your evasion is high enough, at least 100, but I have the shoes of life because Ollie dance is stupid. For the accessory, I have the Amorite necklace equipped, which makes me immune to all ailments because I don't want to waste turns healing my ailments. You can purchase them from the accessory dealer in Club Escapade for 500,000 yen. If you need a money guide, I've got one for you right here. Check it out. If you'd prefer to save your money, you can complete a request from Elizabeth that asks you to get her a Christmas present. You'll get an incense box that gives you an insta heal. Either way, I don't need to put Unshaken Will on my personas, which is good. If you're short on gems, you can buy ones you need from the guy in the nightclub that sells the necklace. He doesn't sell rubies though, so you're gonna have to keep going to Tartarus if you want those. Now that the equipment is out of the way, let's get into the personas that you'll need for the fight. You only really need two for this fight. To make things much easier for yourself, you'll want Orpheus Tellos. 
videos. If you don't have Orpheus Telos, I also have a guide to max every social link in one run so you can get him. Orpheus Telos was made to fight Elizabeth, being able to resist all types of damage so that you don't have to worry about that. If you plan on using the two Persona setup, make sure one has Enduring Soul and the other has Endure. You'll need them both to win this fight. For your second Persona, I would recommend using Chiyu since it only has one weakness. Dedicate Orpheus Telos to dealing the damage and have Chiyu doing the support. Make sure you have Resist Electricity on it to cover weaknesses as well. You can also use items to substitute for some of these skills if you don't want to swap Personas. Now I'll show you the setup that I use. I actually use 5 Personas in my setup. My starting Persona is Orpheus. If you've seen my Persona 5 videos, you'll notice that this is a throwback to my ultimate support Persona. I have the auto buffs on Orpheus at the start of a fight, then I swap to Orpheus Telos the damage dealer. As you can see, my build is catered to ice damage. The reason I picked elemental damage over almighty damage is for two reasons. The first being that you do more magic damage through elemental skills now that magic ability has been nerfed. Now it only boosts non-almighty magic damage, so I use ice age, ice amp, and single target boost. Magic ability is on my weapon, so I don't need to use it on Orpheus Telos. Speaking of, I recently discovered another passive called magic mastery that boosts damage by another 50%. You can only only get it through mutation though, and it can't be inherited. I would probably replace Concentrate or Salvation with it and have it on another persona. You can use the Best Friends Theurgy instead of Concentrate to save SP during the fight. Since I mentioned Salvation, I know people would prefer to have Diarahan to reduce the SP cost, but let's keep it real. Once you get this strong, you're not thinking about cost effectiveness. You don't have to go with an Ice build, you can use any other element, this is just the one that I decided to use for this build. It will work the same as long as you have the the appropriate boosts. Next up we have Hillel, my main almighty damage dealer. Nothing much to say here other than he's got resist ice to cover the weaknesses, heat riser in case I need buffs and don't have an item, firm stamps to reduce the damage further and endure for this fight specifically. Next up we have Thanatos, another almighty damage dealer. He has debilitate, I keep my debuffs on separate personas to be safe, and he has enduring soul specifically for this fight because you need endure and enduring soul for this fight. You don't need this last one, but I have Chiyu here for when I get greedy. I found out that Scarlet Havoc's damage is affected by charge, so I have Slash Boost and Slash Amp along with Multi-Target Boost. Since it ignores resistances, it doesn't matter when we use it. Alright, now let's finally get into the fight. Elizabeth has 20,000 HP, so using Armageddon right away will not work, and it's important to use a calculator to keep track of her health at all times. Elizabeth attacks in a certain pattern, and does not deviate from it unless you do too much damage to her. Here is the pattern. You can land some big damage if you can use skills with opposing elements on the correct personas. For example, since I have ice spells on Orpheus Telos, I use Concentrate and wait for Cert to attack before I use Diamond Dust. That way I can do the most damage that I possibly can. If you don't feel like waiting for Cert, you can switch to your Almighty Damage Dealer as long as you're keeping the rules regarding affinities in mind. Phase 2 starts once you get Elizabeth's HP below 13,000. She will debuff you and then use Concentrate. The first instant kill will come next turn. Switch to your persona that has Enduring Soul to take the hit so you can get all of your health back. If you can somehow get her HP under 10,000 before she can get the Megidola on off, you can skip phase 2 entirely. Otherwise, you'll only have a few turns to try to get her health under 10,000 before she tries to instant kill you again. Once she hits you with Megidola on, she will cast Charge and switch to Thor. She'll use Tarunda to lower your attack, making it harder to pass the damage check. A pretty easy way to get around this phase is to keep her health slightly above 13,000. Buff yourself with Heat Riser, debuff her with Debilitate, use Concentrate, and use Morningstar. That should get you somewhere between 2500 and 3000 damage. Then keep hitting her with Morningstar and you should do enough damage to skip the phase. Remember to use a calculator to keep track of her HP. If you have to go into phase 2, make sure you use Charger Concentrate and debuff Elizabeth and buff yourself so that you can do as much damage as possible. Don't forget that you also have Fuka's Theurgy, so you can use that to get buffs without wasting a turn. Once her HP gets below 10,000, the final phase 
phase starts. Elizabeth will heal herself and cast Heat Riser, putting her HP back to 20,000. This is when you'll need the calculator the most, as making a wrong guess will get you killed. Her attack pattern also changes completely. She will start using two personas instead of one, making it even easier to break the affinity rule. Here's the attack pattern for the third phase. Elizabeth will also randomly reset the pattern, so you need to be even more careful not to break the affinity rule during this phase. During this phase, you need to get her HP as close to 10,000 as possible without going under. Once you get close, start using your regular attacks to slowly chip away at her HP. 10,500 is a good number to aim for. Once you reach this or get close, use Concentrate, make sure Elizabeth is not buffed, make sure you are not debuffed, and switch to your persona that has Endure. Use Morningstar. Her health should be under 10,000. Once her health health is under 10,000, she will try and instant kill you again. You'll survive with 1 HP due to the Endure skill. Once it's your turn, use Arm again to end the fight. This, this is for all the marbles. It's over. It's over. Let's go. <laughs> if this helped you out, make sure you like and subscribe and check out my playlist in case you need help with anything else.